greetings and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the fifth episode of the Middle Grades Collaborative uh, Conversations. Uh, my name is Don Taylor and uh, I'm a classroom teacher at Main Street Middle School in Montpelier. Each month we get together uh, to discuss issues in education and how educators are evolving uh, their practice. And uh, this, this uh, month we have uh, several our usual contributors, but hopefully we're also going to have uh, students joining us to talk about their experience as well. And uh, before we go too much further, I'd like to thank the uh, Middle Grades Collaborative and the Tarrant Institute uh, and Up for Learning for supporting uh, this work. And this month, uh, we'll be discussing how teachers are empowering students uh, addressing issues related to current events, including anti-racism, uh, white supremacy, and white privilege, and also hearing from students who are in the middle of learning uh, both through uh, the pandemic and also the most recent uh, insurrection. So uh, without further ado, if we could just have our uh, panelists introduce themselves briefly, and then we'll start the conversation. Thank you very much. Why don't we start? We'll go uh, Lindsay, Kevin, Meg, Mora, Rowan, Zoe, Sam. I think that's Jeswin and Leo, if that's okay. All right. And Lindsay, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Hallman. I am the executive director of Up for Learning. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Peely Hunt. I'm a fifth or eighth grade teacher on Swift House at Williston Central School. Hi, everyone. I am uh, Meg O'Donnell. Took me a minute. I am Meg O'Donnell. Uh, I teach humanities on the red team at Shelburne Community School. Hi, I'm Maura Wheeler. She, her. I am the proficiency based learning and technology integration coach at Lamoille South. I'm uh, Sarah Popowitz. I'm a program director at Up for Learning. Sam? I am Sam Nelson, pronouns are he, him. I teach middle level humanities this year for the Virtual Learning Academy, most years for Shelburne Community School. Thank you. And then could we uh, have our uh, guest speakers introduce themselves? I'm Tia. Last year I went to um, Shelburne Community School, but this year I'm in um, the Virtual Learning Academy. Thank you. Um, hi, folks. My name is Evelyn Monhe. I use the pronoun she, her, and I am an employee of Up for Learning. So I'm um, here with Lindsay and Sarah. Hi, my name is Zoe Martinez. Um, I go to the Virtual Learning Academy. Uh, hi, I'm Leo Miller. Um, I go to VLA, but I used to go to Wilson Central. Jasmine? Hello all, my name is Jeswin Anthony, it is he, him pronouns, and um, I go to Harwood Union High School. All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, you know, we want to get right to uh, hearing from our student voices, um, but before we, we do that, I just, if we could just hear from the, uh, uh, the adult teachers, just super quick, the question, uh, just to check in was, uh, in light of all the recent events and turmoil that's been happening, what are you doing to care for yourself and uh, your students uh, right now? And uh, I put the uh, order of speakers in the chat. I hope I included everybody. And we'll start with Lindsay and uh, then go to Kevin. Okay. And perhaps we can also include our youth um, in that question as well. Um, yep. And so in light of recent, I was just putting the question in the chat as well. What are you doing to care for yourself and or your peers if you are a youth um, right now and or um, your community? Um, what am I doing? Um, I'm just taking a lot of time to check in and make sure that relationships are always at the center and connecting with um, my youth and adult partners. Um, that's, you know, just the, the heart of our work. So just making extra space for that, making extra space for people to share how they're feeling, how they're showing up, um, and um, not trying to force a certain agenda or with, you know, um, because it's Monday and we have to do this. It's like, we are just glad that people are showing up and we're glad you're here and let's check in. 
let's center what's going on in our country, in our communities, and in our in our own lives. And so I will pass it to Kevin. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah, I've definitely, in terms of like the self-care piece, uh, been leading a lot on my team. And I'm, again, it just makes me so grateful to be on such an incredible team where we're athletes collaborating both in and out of school and, and bringing a lot of laughter with one another, but also knowing like it's a safe place for us to vent or just go over things that make us worried in the world. Um, it's, it's, just, it's really a family away from family. So that's been super supportive to have us to lean on one another um, through all this. And then for my students, you know, like Lindsay's saying, it's really just giving space, um, making sure that we're providing the space for kids to to ask questions, to talk about what's happening. And, you know, with me, it's, I, I feel like as I'm in teaching more and more, it, it's becoming more political and I'm just more open to being completely honest with how I feel about situations happening and just like how it feels great during an advisor to say, listen, this was white supremacy and white privilege, like, that, that was it, right? It was, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. So regardless of your, you know, what you might hear at home or, or your political standpoint, that, that's it's what it is. And and just to kind of be blunt about that stuff. And again, just a lot of people to, to be thinking about it and asking questions about it has been really powerful. Thank you, Kev. Um, I, uh, for self-care, uh, I, Try to get outside as much as I can, and I am loving that there's snow out there to play in because that really um, that makes it that makes it and um, playing with my boys when I can when they'll let me. Um, for students, um, so we have this part of our week. Wednesdays is our is our midweek, and and it's called Impactful Wednesdays. And what we've been trying to do has been really intentional about that. Um, we're finding that Thursdays are actually more intentional because we're debriefing what happened on the Impactful Wednesday. Um, and I have found that uh, similar to others, just creating space, um, I have come to rely on sort of three basic questions, like what do you know about what happened to just kind of make sure that we have, that we're informed. Um, so what do we know? How does it make us feel? And what do we need or, or want to know more about? And so sort of having those three questions has allowed us to unpack a whole lot of stuff. And as long as we just continue to hold space for that, that, um, uh, that's been really rich and helpful um, as, a, as a community. Um, for me, I think similarly, think leaning really heavily on um, my team. So uh, two weeks ago on Wednesday, as the instruction was happening, our administrative team jumped together uh, sort of as it was happening to make sure that we put a letter out to families taking a stance against um, what we were seeing and helping to support all teachers with what to do um, in the morning and how to, to make and hold space um, for all members of our community coming in. Um, but then in addition to that, really thinking about how do we hold space for each other to then process? Because I think jumping to action is one thing, but then taking care of each other is a real um, different uh, side of it. And so we've been trying to be really intentional about um, holding space and checking in and um, really working on those relationships um, and, and trying to be really intentional just about building in uh, those, those pieces throughout um, all the work that we're doing. Um, I guess for myself, I've done two things. Um, one, say, I've been trying to get outside more. It's beautiful, cross country ski, listen to a fun podcast, or it's just something that's like just distracting for myself. Um, and then I think one of the biggest things that was very intentional was um, actually letting go of social media right now. Um, for some people, I think it's an outlet for me. It is a destructive cycle that brings me like a lot of anxiety and I don't, not necessarily because of what I'm, po I don't post anything, but just seeing, um, I just realized it, it, it's just really wreaking havoc on my mental health. And I have to make the personal choice to just not look anymore. And so um, that's been a big, 
yeah, that's been a big choice that I've, I've had to make and have lots of conversations about with my own family. Um, and then just, I think that's the piece I'm missing is the conversations. And so as far as our youth partners, my colleagues I work with, you know, my family and friends is just trying to have more of those um, face-to-face personal conversations about what's happening versus the social media aspect of, uh, of what's happening. Um, I'm missing that connection. And I, I think that that's a big part of being able to talk through um, with everybody. So that's kind of where I've, I've taken it. Care for self for me looks like exercise because no matter what's going on out in the world, in my professional life or even in my personal life, that's something I can control. Feels good to get sweaty, clear my head. Um, care for students echoes what I've already heard some people saying, the more unscripted, off task, silly, goofy social time we have in our scheduled classes, the better. And I got some students in this webinar that just might be able to attest to how off task I can get. It's ridiculous, people. It, get, it gets bad sometimes, but it makes class feel like a really safe, fun, positive social space. Um, so yeah, and, and I'm thinking since Tia, you're next, this goes for you and anyone else that doesn't work directly with students. I think it was reworded in the prompt, but um, not only a, a, what does self-care look like, but for you, since it might not be care for your students because you don't necessarily work directly with students, what does care for the people in your life look like, peers, family, friends, et cetera? So I've been trying to distance myself as much as I can from my phone, while at the same time still trying to like keep those connections with my friends. Like the other day with Mira, I had like a virtual tea party, which is really fun. You know, you get to keep those connections with your friends, but um, just the same, um, just distance myself from social media. I've, I don't, I'm not like a big fan of my phone in general. Like I don't really like it, but um, just really trying to like distance myself from that whole thing. So I can just kind of make sure I'm okay before I go and I'm like on social media and stuff, you know? Um, but yeah, keeping up with friends and making sure all my friends are also okay. And like saying, how do you feel about this? Um, what are your opinions on this? Are you doing well? Do you need anyone to talk to? And stuff like that. Um, for myself, and self-care, I had my tonsils out last week, so I wasn't really, I haven't been super present in, in a bit, um, but I've been having a lot of conversations with my mom um, and loved ones. And um, it's also really enjoyable to have those like really lax conversations. Um, as a fully remote student, I'm in, I'm in early college. I don't really have those interactions in school. Um, so I surround myself with my friends and my family. Um, but yeah, I was, it's interesting for myself as a person of color to interact with with the um, capital issue, um, but it's been it's been an interesting journey and progression of like understanding and also as like the country moves forward, um, the presidential inauguration yesterday, just all of those things. Um, so just trying to stay present in the moment and, and watching as we, as we progress and move. Um, some of the things that I've been doing, um, a lot of is like reading, and going outside and exercising. Like I got into cross country skiing recently. Um, and like calling my friends, like FaceTiming some of them that I don't really connect with and just like, um, because like I moved from New Jersey too during this. So just like keeping in touch with my friends from New Jersey and just like really just like reading and having fun. Um, uh, well, I'm definitely talking to my friends like a couple of you said and I text them and call them and, and a lot of the times they don't respond, but the ones who do, I we always like tell each other how we're feeling and stuff. Um, I definitely like sometimes I play games or stuff to distract myself and going outside too and drawing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, right now um, with all the stuff that's going on, 
um, I've really gone back into mindfulness, and I'm, like, using this, at, like, the Calm app and Headspace. Like, remember I used to do it in, like, middle school, and, like, I would blow it off, because, like, it wasn't really that helpful. I mean, I don't know. It was, it was good. But, like, I, I guess now, when our minds are just so cluttered, using it now is just, like, so much more helpful. And paired with good music, it's just really great. Um, I'm also really trying to connect back with my friends. Um, be there if they want to, like, you know, discuss stuff about what's going on. Um, I've also kind of cut down on my news consumption because that just adds on to the stress and anxiety of all of what's going on, so that's it. Hey, Adam, will you just introduce yourself before you answer the question? And same with Mira when we get to you. Thank you. My name is Adam Porterfield. I'm a sophomore at Harvard Union High School. I use he, him pronouns. Anything else or is that good? All right, so to take care of myself right now, I've just been trying to keep some sort of routine going day to day, which is definitely tough with school and everything being on only two days a week, but it's nice to have something to work off of. And I've been definitely checking with friends a lot more, talking with them a lot more, which is good for them and me. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Mira Novak, I'm an 8th grader at Trumbull Community School. Um, I use she, her, hers pronouns. And um, something I've been doing for self-care lately is, um, I think definitely trying to connect with my friends, but I think also before the pandemic, I was never, I never really texted anyone. I never really, <laughs> I didn't really rely on that communication. It kind of stressed me out um, because I saw everyone um, every day and I didn't really need to. So um, something I've been trying to do is kind of not stress about connecting with people because I'm someone who I've been trying to kind of enjoy my own company lately and kind of not worry about constantly like connecting or feeling pressure to connect because um, I feel like sometimes those things can kind of stress me out, um, like pressure to connect with friends and like text them. And I think those don't really make me feel like um, calm. So I think connecting, but having the balance of just um, kind of being myself sometimes. Uh, thank you, everybody. And just before I kind of turn it over to Lindsay, I just hear so many echoes of what sort of I'm going through as well. And one of the things that I've done, I guess, um, to I'm face to face five days a week. And so we we dove right into the all of the events. And as Kevin talked about, um, I saw that as a great opening to talk about anti racism, and white supremacy and white privilege. But I'm also really making sure to have uh, firm agreements in place about really good conversations and making sure that everybody's feeling safe. And then we're also playing a lot of games. Like, so we have, we might have a real, you know, good conversation about things that are, you know, tough to talk about. And then we'll kind of split from that and we'll play some games. We'll also, uh, a lot of people are mentioning uh, these creative spaces. So I've left a lot of room for kids to be drawing and writing creatively and just expressing themselves that way. And also giving kids a lot of opportunity to reflect, asking, you know, kids, how are you feeling and having them blog. And so that I can sort of take the temperature of that. Um, and that's been really good. And I think kids, I think kids are, as you've all mentioned, are so aware of what's happening. And I think just by addressing it, and also one of the things I've done is kind of admit you know, been really uh, forthright about my vulnerability with it too, and about how it's giving me a lot of anxiety and stress and, you know, what am I doing for myself? And as many of you mentioned, um, you know, I have a mom who is kind of, you know, self-isolating because of the COVID. So we've set up a lot of connections between my kids and, and her, you know, every day FaceTime doing that. So that becomes a routine. And then uh, I like to exercise too, but I've been doing a lot of yoga. I started doing yoga and mindfulness and uh, that's been really helpful. And I've actually been sore from the yoga, but uh, just practicing today, I was practicing my ocean breathing. And uh, so when I get anxious, I'm actually starting to rely on some of that breathing and some of that, um, you know, those strategies to help myself kind of unwind. Um, and that's, and as that people mentioned, getting out and getting a lot of fresh air as well. But thank you so much for, it's just really thoughtful, really appreciate it. I do, uh, again, before I turn it over to Lindsay, uh, Joe Rivers has joined us. And Joe, uh, do you want to just introduce yourself? And then uh, the last question we were addressing was, what are you doing to take care of your students and, uh, and yourself uh, during 
uh, these historic times. I'm Joel Rivers. I'm a teacher at Brattleboro Area Middle School. And um, how are we coping with this? Uh, I think poorly would be the answer that would come from, uh, from our team right now. Uh, we're all struggling and uh, we're just trying to support one another as, as best we can. We're trying to be open about it. You know, I came in as Don was sharing uh, that he is talking with his students about the challenges he and his family are facing. And I think that's important uh, for all of us to, to role model uh, the situations uh, that we're facing and, and just share that uh, we're all trying to figure this out together. It's, it's not something that has happened before. So we don't have history to, to rely on to just say, oh yeah, we, we did this last time and it either worked or it didn't. So we're all trying to figure it out together and we're all equal in that regard. And so this, um, you know, the idea of I'm the teacher and you're the student and we're in different places, um, that's all out the window right now. And so it's important uh, for all of us to, to listen to one another. I guess those are the things that we talk about, but I don't think any of us, um, on our team are feeling like we're winning right now, that we have control over this. Um, we're all trying to uh, cope and uh, students and teachers. It's a challenge. Thank you. And again, welcome, Joe. Um, I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Lindsay right now. And uh, Lindsay, if you wanna take it away, uh, that'd be great to this kind of the second part of our, our conversation. Sure, I was just thinking as I was listening to everyone, um, particularly our youth partners here, just like the lessons that can be, I hope other people are listening to the ways in which you all are caring for yourselves because, um, and each other, because it is so important. And I just, you know, it just really moved me to hear how you're really taking time to care for yourself and your loved ones. Um, I also have really started a regular back to it. Like I used to dance all the time and I can't go to a dance studio. So I've been doing a regular yoga practice. It's really helped me too, Don. And Mira's family and my family, every Saturday night, we have a standing Zoom game night, um, seven o'clock if anybody wants to hop on game night <laughs> with our families, super fun. So just staying connected in those ways is so important. Um, so I was thinking originally, and I, I'm just going to put this back to my youth partners here, um, particularly those that have just recently done some facilitation with Cultivating Pathways um, or anyone here. Um, I was thinking, building off of our last racial justice dialogue, like where we started with Spot the Difference and then talking about some of those questions with the folks on this um, call, and then I wondered like, okay, spot the difference really reflects where we were two weeks ago. And as I was listening to you all talk, I was thinking, what about if we watched the um, Amanda Gorman's poet poem together and really reflected on that and brought that forth and amplified that. 